Showtime with Coop is powered by FanDuel, the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNS Media Network. Welcome to a new edition of Showtime with Coop, insightful BS with my Laker teammates and NBA legends. And on the show today, we have uh, a young man that my daughter Simone was in love with. She loved her some Mike Schrank. And I, 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 well, I can see it a little bit, but at that time I couldn't see it, Mike. <laughs> it was fun, but everybody, welcome Mike Schrank to the show. Hi, Mike. Thank you, Coop. Nick, thank you. Mike, good happy to have to you, Mike. Happy well, to I, have I, you. I loved your kids. They were beautiful. Thank you, Mike. And, and she loved you, man. Mike is all the way. Okay, Mike, I'm going to read off your bio just a little bit, okay? Oh, don't do that. Coop. <laughs> Mike is a Canadian. He's uh, uh, from Welland, Ontario, having grown up in Port Robinson, Ontario. Am, am I right, Mike? So far, so good, Coop. Okay. A rural <laughs> farming community, okay? How did the basketball play? Well, that, Indiana that is rural. Well, la la <laughs> Larry Bird was from a farming community too, right? Yes. Yeah. So, okay. And he was white too. I mean, uh, there's the yeah. two things you have in common, Mike. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, tell us a little bit about early life for you. Just like you said, Coop, I, I grew up in this uh, a, a small town here. We were we were a farm, uh, family farm, you know. Uh, so that, that's what I knew growing up in life was working in the fields, working with, we had cattle, we had, you know, crops in the field, all that stuff. And uh, basketball really wasn't, I mean, it, some guys maybe in the city played a little bit, but I had no idea until I was about 16 or 17, uh, really about um, basketball. So it what, was- What were some of your chores? Oh, geez, Coop, we, my dad would wake us up at about six in the morning before school. We'd go, have to go to the barn and clean the barn and feed the animals and get all that done, then go in and get cleaned up a bit, get ready to go to school, come home from school and back to work. It was it was kind of nonstop work at, the, at that time. Right but, Mike, you're not explaining the chores. Tell me, did you have to uh, uh, pick up cow <laughs> shit? Cow? Did you have to oh, yeah. uh, feed the you chickens? Want, you want to, uh, to hear the good, dirty stuff, right? You're, you're darn right. I mean, you get 100 cows in a barn, they make a mess, and that's got to be cleaned up. So, yeah. But that's fertilizer, isn't it? It is, yes. In fact, that some would say that's the reason why I may have grown so much. I was standing in it so much. <laughs> <laughs> Full of shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> but cool. the life, so, cool. you know, it, it was up here. It was a whole different life than in the United States, even in rural areas. You know, like you talk about Larry Bird, but here, um, if anybody watched anything, it was hockey. And even that, like I wanted to play, but I couldn't because I lived out in the country and had no way to get into the town to the arenas. Or plus, we had we had to work, so that was out of the question. But you know, Mike, growing up like that, you don't. When you're a young man going through that, you don't really realize what you're missing because that's what your life is about at that time, and it's about making things work. And and uh, your mom and dad love you. I mean, were you always tall, Mike? I was. Yeah, yeah always tall. In fact, I sometimes you come across these old pictures, and there was one. Uh, I think it was about three years old. And people look at it and go, "What were you about eight years old then, or something?" You know. <laughs> 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 you're right, like, though. You know, we we. We were sort of isolated here. In fact, there was a number of years where we didn't have a television even. So I didn't, you know, I wasn't watching games. I wasn't, wa I didn't know anything about that. All I knew really was the, the work on the farm, you know? Yeah. So, so uh, I was complaining about that, but it's just the way it was. Yeah. So in the 10th grade, you're going to school. And I want to know who this coach is that prodded you, pushed you, encouraged you. To play basketball because you there's a quote that you said, Well, I played because I didn't want to hurt his feelings. <laughs> That's true. He, his name was Bill Haluka, and he was actually an electricity coach teacher. He taught an electricity class. <laughs> and I took that class and I liked him. He was a nice man, you know. And uh, he said, Why don't you come on out and play basketball? I didn't want to hurt his feelings, say I didn't like basketball. So I thought, you know, I'll go out, go to a couple of things, and then quit, right? And he even said, he goes, I ah, just have fun. You'll never go anywhere with this, you know, so just have some fun and play a little bit. And that's really how it started. Just crazy little thing like that. 
And did you like it, Mike, once you started playing? You know what? I like the guys. I mean, I, I, I was really like Coop. I'm, I'm talking about totally raw. I had, I had no idea about anything, right? I mean, I had zero idea. But I, I, the guys were nice guys. It was kind of fun hanging out with them. And then for some reason, which I honestly don't know why, I just kept going with it. You must have been good. No, eventually. No, <laughs> yeah, well, glutton for punishment. <laughs> you know what? I, I was I was big. I was strong. I, I could run and jump pretty good. So they, I guess that some people thought, well, I know. Well, I know when the, I got recruited by Kanishas, they said well, we can teach you to play. That was kind of the thing, right? Because I wasn't good. No. So so Mike, your physique. You never worked on that. You just well, well obviously you worked on it because you were lifting the uh, tractors and trailers and shit like that. <laughs> but um, but your physique just came about like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, literally, Coop. Since I was like five or six years old, we were moving like you know, hundred pound bags of grain and bags of fertilizer and bales of hay and. That's crazy. It, it was always hard physical work. So I was always right right on through kindergarten on up. I was always like much stronger than anybody in my classes and stuff like that. It's just the way it was, right? So good. Can, is it safe to say we can call you a gentle giant? I kind of don't like the gentle part. It's <laughs> really true, though, you know? <laughs> okay, Mike, so 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade. How did, now, how, I don't want to mispronounce this name because I always thought it was a weird name, this school you went to. Kinesis? That, that was the, the college I went to, yes. Kinesis. Yeah, so how do you say it? Kinesius. Kinesius. Okay. Yes. How did Kinesius find you? Yeah, that's a funny story there, too, because they're, they're, where I live in Canada is about maybe 15 minutes from Buffalo, New York. And my uncle, who lived in Buffalo, happened to go to a, a church dinner, a father and son dinner, where the guest speaker was the coach at Kinesius. And after the speech, he said, hey, I got I got this real tall nephew that just lives across the border. You should go have a look at him. And that and that's really how they uh, they came over to watch me. Probably laughed, but, you know, I stopped making a joke out of your career. You're a damn oh, good player, hey, man. No, no, it's true. I actually I actually scored on my own basket that time. When they came I thought I made a great play by intercepting the inbound pass, and I scored on my own basket. That's how bad it was. <laughs> you had to be coordinated. You had to be have coordination. I mean, usually, you know, you see players who just can't, you know, they're not players. People who want to play, and they're just so uncoordinated, they can't even catch the damn ball. You had to be coordinated for them to come see you. I, I guess that may be, it may be part of reason. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. You know? We found a compliment for you, Mike. There we yeah, go. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you forgot about my extreme good looks. You know, they want they needed a really good looking player on the team. Oh, Mike, you know what? You are a handsome man. <laughs> Coop, your eyesight is going, man. <laughs> Mike, uh, two things that your parents told you when you were little that still you hold dear to your heart now. Two things. Oh man, that, that's I think you know I can go with my mother always just saying, you know, try to be a good man, a good father, a good husband, and then my my dad would he would always just say, you know, just work and, and be honest with your work and and uh, really that's kind of the things that you, I carry through the most, right? So you go to Canisius and you play. And you get drafted. Yeah. And you're the second pick in 1985. You're the second pick, uh, first pick in the second round. And you go to the Portland Trailblazers. Was that a cultural shock for you? Wait, before you go there, Coop, you're skipping from uncoordinated, can't shoot, <laughs> wrong basket to the to the, the NBA Wait, draft. The what happened in college? He was handsome. <laughs> I, I said he was handsome. <laughs> and handsome. <laughs> what happened in college? <laughs> Something had to happen. I mean, did you blossom in college? <laughs> well, I tell us about your college experience. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Well, you know, I have to give the credit to the to the coaches at Canisius. They were true to their word. When they recruited me, they said, here's what's going to happen. We're going to play you at least 30 minutes a game, no matter what happens. And we're going to give you two years and you're going to give us two years. <laughs> and that's really what happened. I mean, they put, they throw me in there. I mean, I was getting like maybe half a point and half a rebound a game in 30 minutes. 
just awful. I go back to my room and stare at the ceiling and just be depressed. Say, what am I doing over here? I had no idea, you know, and I mean, the papers were writing bad stuff about me and, you know, being, being like 6'11 or whatever, going into the States, they just expect that you should be able to play basketball, you know? And they, in fact, they used to write, they'd say, they, even though they didn't know I was a farmer, they'd say he plays like a farmer, you know, <laughs> I mean, it was, they would write some horrible things about me, you know, but then that was like for the first two years. And again, I don't know why I didn't quit. It because doesn't... why would you quit, Mike? You're the second leading stock blocker in school history. You have 172 blocks. Yeah, but I think it took over the last Meeks. two years. <laughs> uh, but of Michael Meeks, do, yeah. have you ever met him? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know Michael. I mean, I haven't seen him for years, but we played a little bit together on the national team. Um, but, yeah, I, I, you know, actually most of those stats I did, I, I think I did them in my final two years years because that kind of way it worked out but you know i really i averaged like nothing my first two and then it turned around and it was i don't know 12 and then 15 or 16 points and something like so it kind of was going up those last two years you know were you having fun though i mean did you start having fun with basketball at that time uh no oh my <laughs> this is the best <laughs> interview i've ever fucking had i'm not joking this is fucking great <laughs> no. It was so, the non fun Michael Shrek <laughs> gets drafted by the serious contending, the Portland Trail Blazers. In the first pick in the second round, was it a culture shock going to Portland? Were you happy when you got a check? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that's another funny thing there, you know, because they well, deferred it. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually never went to Portland. I was drafted by Portland, but they had a, a, a pre draft deal with Chicago. Because oh, they had a, right. So you ended up playing with the great Michael, Michael Jordan. Jordan. How the hell was that? Well, you know, I always say when people ask me about that, I said, I tried to teach him as much as I could before I left. <laughs> he was turned he out to be a, you know, a pretty good player after that, right? <laughs> good impact on him. That was a good influence yeah, you had you there know, so, on the uh, young man. The CLNS Media Network is powered by FanDuel. Sign up at FanDuel.com slash Boston. And get in on the action with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. When you place a $5 bet, that's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. Uh, you are listening to Showtime with Coop. <laughs> and we are kicking the BS today, man, with Mike Shrek. He got it all over us. Mike, we are at the stage of our show where it's called Coop's Lightning Round. I'm going to ask you about five people. And you tell me as much or a little bit about them, okay? Oh boy! Now, do your walk through the NBA. You know, you finish. You played with the Lakers, then you went on to play with the San Antonio Spurs. Okay, Greg Popovich. He was just starting out at that point, and obviously a very good coach, knowledgeable basketball. But what, what what sticks out in my mind with him was one time he was he was really. Uh, really yelling at me and laid it into me because we were playing, uh, I think it was Sixers, and I was guarding Moses Malone. Oh, boy. And I, I, I kind of would keep a forearm on him, but keep a, my body a little bit back because I know he used, to lose, he used to love to ram his body into you, kind of knock you off balance, and then do his thing. So I was trying to hold – and and, and Greg Popovich was always telling me, you got to keep your body right on him. And I, and I was just trying to explain that I don't know that that's going to work. He's going to just knock me down and <laughs> – and he yelled at me, and he was just like, "If you if you were so effing good, you'd still be with the Lakers." <laughs> <laughs> so that's my memory of that. That's a great one. <laughs> you said that, Mike. Yeah, him or Larry Brown, they were both. <laughs> yeah, so I, 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 you know, I really couldn't speak up. You know, <laughs> I'm the one. That, I'm the one that trampled by, you know, by trampled by Moses in there. You know, <laughs> Michael Jordan. Oh, most competitive pl person I've ever met in my life. Compete with everything. I, I would guess if you had, if you were sat down to have lunch with him, he'd see who could eat the sandwich fastest, probably. <laughs> he competed with everything, right? It, it, every minute of every practice was just as hard as he did in the game. Did he ever talk to you? Uh, did he ever speak with you? I mean, pr probably sometimes at some point and during practice. I mean, we didn't hang out after or whatever. You know, I mean, I wasn't really in that in that circle with him and that. But um, he was always nice to me. I had I I always liked him. I never th had any bad thoughts or anything. Um, but I, I don't. Really... What did he say to you? Pardon me. What did he say to you? Hey, rookie, go get day. me some water. 
<laughs> no, make sure you got a clean towel waiting for me. <laughs> no, no. Mike, what what year was that? 85, 86? Yes, that, that was So a, did you witness the 62 point game against Boston? Were you on that bench? I did, yes. Tell yeah. tell us about that. Well, well you I remember lost. I sat We're on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> but you witnessed it. Like, I think my dad was in the stands. I want to see if the two match. What, no, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what can you say, right? I mean, it was a, a, just an unbelievable performance, obviously, right? One, of, one that everybody remembers. So there's probably not much I can add to it, but I just... But like, I how, how, afterwards, you go into the lock. I mean, they got swept that series. So, like, but he scores 62. Like, were you all, like, hyped up, or was he pissed off you lost? Do you remember? Oh yeah, he was, well he was never happy if we lost. Never happy. Yeah. Right? No one, never hey, happy. you know what? The best thing I saw in that isn't that the move where he went between his leg back yeah. telling Larry Bird and he hit it off the glass. Yes. yes. <laughs> What'd you he think of that, that Mike? Did that turn you on? That move? I, I think you have that wrong, Coop. That was me that did that. <laughs> <laughs> Coop, you know what's a good one from that one? When when Casey Jones thought he should put Bill Walton on Michael Jordan in that game. They tried to put everybody on Jordan that game. Walton had cinder blocks on his feet. Like there was no way. <laughs> no, Mike was on fire that game. I got Oh I got yeah. Him. I mean, come on. Come okay. on. There was no way. Moving on, James Worthy. Oh my gosh. Definitely one of the best players ever. I hit he was something else. I, I, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't have to tell you. You played with him a lot longer, but I, I always held him with the highest regard. He's one of the greatest players ever. In fact, I used to love that one quick spin move where he'd mm. have it in the post. And I know when I went over to Europe to play it, I would try it, and they called me traveling every single time. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "Wait a minute! You can't call that. This is Worthy's move." You know. We're going to get into overseas in a minute, but <laughs> great story. Um, you were brought to the Lakers to play behind one of the best, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It could, pretty incredible. I mean, you know, yeah. What can I say other than incredible? He's it, it, probably the best player, one of the best players ever, right? Ever, ever, ever. Probably even underrated, you know. I think, he's underrated. You know, um, I have so much respect for Cap. So much, it's it's incredible. I mean, you know, and you you come in and got to be honest, you have a you have this this healthy respectful fear of him. You know, um, you didn't you didn't want to come in and start babbling and John and talking or being a loud mouth or anything like that. You just come in, be quiet, listen, figure out what you have to do. And you learn, learn fast that, you know, he's 20 years in the league this time. He's faced everything and he's, you know, done everything. And he, he doesn't need some young guy coming in, hacking away at him, trying to, trying to prove something. You know, it was learning to put up enough resistance, I guess, to make him work a little bit, just to keep him in shape more or less. Because it was, you know, really, what else, what else was I going to do? You know, I mean, there's not never a chance I'm ever even going to be a fraction as, as good as he to play you know, those, so I had, you kind of learned this is what you got to do. That's what my job was from that standpoint, you know, to, to kind of provide enough resistance. You didn't want to piss him off, that's for sure, you know. Um, did, did he practice hard, Kareem? Was he, a, did he practice hard? I mean, that's a trick question. Did, yeah, I, I can yeah. remember times that, you know, he was 40 years old and they still had a hard time beating him down the floor. You know, he was a well, he was, Michael, Michael Thompson used to say we were just there to take his Kareem elbows because he'd elbow your practice. The legendary elbows. <laughs> and he always had them up, you know, he always had them up. And, and was, yeah. Yeah. It, I it love was, this. I love the story Barkley tells about his first all star game. And he's uh, outside the locker room with uh, Bird and Mikhail and Magic. And, and uh, he says, Oh my God, there's cap there's kareem abdul jabbar and kareem's over there reading a book you know like kareem would read a book and they said go over go over and say hi to him he's the nicest guy in the world you're gonna love him they were all so they all stood there and watched and barkley goes over he says mr jabbar i can't i can't tell you how much you're my hero and and kareem looks up and goes i'm reading Put his head right down in the book. Charles walked back with his with his tail <laughs> between his legs, and Bird and Mikhail and, and Magic are dying laughing. That's a great story. Well, Typical. Last but not least, 
Mike, Kobe Bryant, the late, great Kobe Bryant. Yeah, uh, wow. I mean, what a player. Like, the whole thing from mental, physical, everything. Just, you know, such a great player and uh, obviously a, a tragic loss. But uh, so much respect for, for him as well as a player. I didn't know him personally, but I certainly respected the way he, he, he worked and approached the game and everything he accomplished, without a doubt, you know. You're listening to Showtime with Coop. Insightful BS with Laker teammates and NBA legends. And we have Mike Schmack in the house today. Mike, in 1986, you had an opportunity to go to the Boston Celtics, but you chose the Lakers. Why? I heard they had this really nice guy named Michael Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> with a seven-year-old daughter that would have a crush on <laughs> Oh, don't make it sound like that, Coop. That's bad. Whoa. It might be from a small town, but it is not like that. <laughs> <laughs> but, Mike, why did you make that choice? I mean, go back east or come out west? Yeah, the reason I made that choice was I, I had uh, – I had heard that uh, the Celtics were signing Bill Walton again, or he was coming off injury or something. He was going to be back playing again. And, and I, this is kind of a crazy thought, I guess, but I know they had uh, uh, Parrish and then with, with Walton coming, I thought, okay, I'm, I'm probably never going to play. I guess I probably should have thought, hey, they got Kareem. <laughs> I'm probably never going to play. <laughs> that didn't occur to me, I guess. And I, I just decided to, I just decided uh, the Lakers, which in hindsight turned out to be a, uh, you know, a, a fortunate decision in the long run. Two titles. We've got two championships. We won. Would you well, help us win two championships? Well, I had a small part, Coop. It was in thanks to you guys. I've always said, like, any anything that, that has arisen out of that in terms of my life later is a result of being fortunate enough to be around you guys because you guys were the guys that did it. I had a little part, and, I, and that's and that's fine, you know. I mean, and, and I was lucky to be there, and uh, you know, even forty years, almost forty years later, you know, I still am appreciative of, of that fact. It's a, it's not uh, something small, you know. Yeah, but you know, Mike, and I always say this about everybody that's been through that organization. As you say, your part was little. Mine was little, too. But, I mean, you never, never, ever knocked that little part because you guys, everybody was significant. From 1 to 13 was significant in helping us win the championship. And we were very, very happy to have you uh, then. Uh, but speaking of that, Mike, I want to talk a little bit about the reunion. You know, we won all the championships. We had that reunion. What was that, a year and a half ago, a year ago? Two Not years even. Ago? It was a year ago in September. Yeah, a year ago. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, did you receive your book, Mike? I did, yes. Okay. I, I, you know what, Mike? I have some – in this room, I'm down in my basement. I have – or the man cave. Not a basement. <laughs> I'm in my man cave. Uh, I have a thing where I put, like, you know, people send you letters, fan mail, and stuff like that. I don't know how this got down here, but I just found mine yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So I just actually saw that book. Tell us about uh, your thoughts and the experience and your, some of your feelings about the reunion in oh, Maui. One of the greatest times in, in, in recent, in years of memory to see the guys again, because, and I, and I say this all honesty, Coop, since that time, I hadn't seen most of you since the, we won the last championship. I hadn't seen most of the guys and, um, but probably not a week ever went by in my life where I didn't think about all of you and think about things that uh, um, that I had learned about that from the guys on that team and the experiences and to get back together, which is probably something I never thought we would do. So there's a couple of thoughts. It was so, so unbelievably great. I can't even explain how great it was to see everybody, but then to think of the generosity like uh, of Magic and, and Coach Riley and everybody else involved to put that together and bring us all out there and put us up to and, and make such a wonderful week the way they did was, uh, you know, I, I hope people that hear about that and read it understand just that that doesn't happen unless the people involved are truly, truly good people, tremendous people and caring people. You know, that, that was one of the things that, you know, when we got off that van there and, and Urban was, he made everybody feel like family. And, and, and suddenly when we saw each other, it actually felt like we were sitting in the locker room again 35, 40 years before. 
You know, it was and that's crazy. what I tell people. That just, I mean, it's like you don't miss a beat because it was like I didn't see us as we were then, bald, fat, you know, old and everything. I saw us young, you know. I saw you with brown, long hair. Okay, I saw you with a full head of hair. Oh, if you saw me with my little hair that I had and and a little bit thinner, but it was such a great experience. And you know yeah. what I'm hearing now, Mike, that the Warriors and mm. some other team people talking about trying to do something like that, and you know. <clears throat> Lakers have always tried to bend uh, the front runners in anything in basketball. Obviously, we're tied with the Celtics for championships, but something like that was almost speechless, man. It really was. You're true, exactly. It's uh, it's almost impossible to fully describe that feeling and what it was like, and it was incredible. It really was. Give, give me two moments, Mike. That uh, you know, I mean, there were so many, but give me yeah. two moments for you that really stood out. Uh, one, seeing Irvin again, and two, honest, and this is not a joke, Coop, was seeing you. Thank you, Mike. And that, that's <laughs> Thank you for calling me the same side. first name, Mike. <laughs> that, 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 I'll get you, I, I always, I mean, you know, that, that's, that's the truth. That was probably the two of the biggest highlights right there, you know. Mike Shrek, you're about to make me cry, and I don't want to <laughs> cry on this podcast. I'm very, very <laughs> Okay. I might cry, too. I have no reason to, or just for poop. <laughs> well, we're having our bromance moment here. Sure. <laughs> but, um, uh, Mike, I truly, truly I like you, man. I love you, actually, because I love all my Lakers teammates. Anybody that came in and, yeah. and spent the year, whether we won a championship or not that year, I mean, I'm very, very uh, respectful and, and cherish all my teammates. That's one of the things I say about being retired. When I retired was I was going to miss the camaraderie on the bus yeah. and the camaraderie in the locker room. Yes. That was all special moments. Exactly. Those are the most important things. And people always talk about the rings. They're nice. But, yeah, it's it's those moments with the guys. I mean, you, you know, just talking about it now, I can go in there and I can see where every guy was sitting and I can still hear the laughing and the joking and the talking. and I. You know, and, and the good times, the bad, the harder times, all of that. Uh, that that's the important thing. That's the stuff that stays with you. And that's the, that's the real meaning of all of it, really, to, to, to me. And I think everybody, and I, I feel the same way. I, I have, you know, I really love all, all the guys that I was, I was playing with, really, truly, you know. So I have a question. So when, when you said you hadn't talked to anybody in, in all these years or seen them, maybe you talked. So when. Did an invitation come in the mail? Did somebody call you first? Like, how did you hear about Hawaii? I think Lon Rosen. I think Lon, oh, uh, Lon Rosen, <laughs> magic agent. Email yeah. somehow, or or no, you know what? Ah, uh, yeah, no, actually, what it was was um, somehow. I think Irvin may have called Canisius College athletic director, who was still the same. Like, athlete. This is this is what I mean, right? Because like, who does that? today yeah. you know, I mean Magic who's one of the greatest players of all time and no offense Mike I, I, but he's calling the 12th man right he's making oh, sure yeah. you're there like to me that's just the special nature of, of Magic Johnson I mean like he didn't have to do that you know I, if I could add to that Nick you know to, please because you know, um, Canisius had called me excited as heck because because Magic sure. himself you know was calling on the phone <laughs> they called me hey he's trying to reach you trying to reach you and then one day I'm driving in my, my driving my daughter to a volleyball practice, and the phone rings and it comes on as the speaker on the thing, and it was it was Urban calling me on my phone, and my daughter sitting there, she's like, "Magic Johnson is calling you." <laughs> that is oh. awesome. And, and I kind of played it off like, "Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah." That's we'll magic. Talk, you know? <laughs> Two titles. Yeah. <laughs> talk every day. I, yeah, that's my boy. <laughs> but you know, to, to hear his voice all those years later, and, and Nick, to your point, to think that you know. I mean, so many guys came and went, and he, like, you know, you guys were the core group for that whole decade, and I was only there for the two years, but for him to call me as though I was somebody, you know, man, and, and I gotta be honest, too, it made me feel kind of nice in front of my daughter, you know. <laughs> <laughs> She'll never forget it, never forget well, that. <laughs> a little bit of ego there, I guess, you know. That's, a, that's remarkable, that's remarkable. Yeah. So, Mike, through your travels, and I know I'm, I'm trying not to jump around, trying to keep this uh, on a thing. Chronological. But the one thing, <laughs> be quiet, Nick. Well, the I'm one sorry. thing I do want to talk about, because I had such a great experience. As I played with the Lakers, I left the Lakers in 91. I thought that was pretty much going to be my career, but I get a call from Il Messagero, and they want me to come and play overseas. 
and I go to Rome and I play it here. You play for four league, uh, and what other team over? So you play for three or two teams. I, I played for four league in in Italy. Then I, I played in Greece, and then my like years later, I played in Croatia for one year. Okay, so how was your? Mine was great. I had a wonderful experience, man. I mean, yeah, I don't care where I would have went, I would have enjoyed it anyway. But again, being in Rome was kind of like being in New York or L.A. But uh, tell us about your experience over there playing. I I loved being over there. I I um, you know, li living right in there was great. It, it was such a different experience. Uh, you know, team they go into different places, and you after the game you'd sit and you have these big meals for a couple of hours with the team, and it was. It was a whole different way of life, I guess, in a way. And I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I liked it. Ended up, the basketball experience didn't completely pan out the way it would have been nice. So I, I ended up getting cut from them. But um, overall, I still love the experience, you know. Because you know how it is over there, Coop, is that they, um, if they're winning, they, they love you. If you're losing, they hate you, right? So they, <laughs> and they can switch players pretty quick, right? Real quick. Sounds like yeah, Boston. Sounds like Boston to me. I mean, right? <laughs> <laughs> but so Mike, you're retired. Uh, you have a lovely daughter, Anna. Uh, she's what six seven, six eight. Anna six nine, cool. Six nine, and she plays on Wisconsin championship team. So the the championship bloodline runs from you to her. What is that like to have to be see your daughter get out there and participate in a very growing sport? I mean, women's volleyball has always been big, but it's only getting bigger. It is. It's it's growing. It's crazy that the crowds they're bringing to games now. In fact, when they won that championship, there was nineteen thousand people in the stadium. Wow. Yeah. The championship, but um, you know, it, it is. It's it's wonderful to see um, to see my daughter in that position. And and what was sort of nice to me is. She she had a, a a big part of it. She was like one, one of them, you know. I mean, it's certainly it's a team game, and everybody had the everybody had their input. But she really came up big, and she she ended up getting MVP of that tournament for that year. So I was very proud of her that she kind of, you know, I, I was riding on the coattails with you guys, kind of thing. Like we talked about before, I had a smaller part, but she had an actual real big impact. So, but she I was the really, newcomer of the year, right? She she had uh, no she not she didn't get uh, rookie of the year but she she got the uh, the MVP of the of the NCAA tournament. Okay, it's okay. You know, which was nice as a freshman, right? So, yeah, yeah. But it, again, it, it's it, you know every every player in that team had their part, you know. So, but it was I was very proud of it. And then not not to leave my son, oh, but he had a good tennis career at Marquette, and I was very proud of him as well. You know okay. what, he, what he did with his with his. Uh, I got to give equal time to, you know. Or you'll be considered a bad dad. So you don't want that to happen. I don't want that. I don't want that. No. Because they can both kick my so, butt. So, so, Mike, what do you do now to occupy your time? Uh, I know you and your wife have some things going on. You know, I'm quite busy with podcasts. People asking for interviews. I had to, <laughs> I had to, I had to, I had to open my schedule up to you know allow some time for you and Nick here. But, uh, <laughs> well, we thank you for that. But what, no, what do you do? I, I see in the background. Is that your office you're in? <laughs> I don't really have an office, Coop. But you, <laughs> if I want to sound, make it more a little more impressive, I can see it. This is where my business takes place. Yes. <laughs> you know what? It's 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 funny how how much time you spend just with everyday life things when when you kind of retire or semi-retire, right? I mean, I still I still do some work on the side, but it's amazing how you just seem to be busy. You know, you got friends like, Hey, can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? Or go do this. Or it's just the next thing you know, you, your, your days fly by and uh, yeah, I just, you just imagine somehow stay busy. Well, Mike, we really appreciate you being on the show today. And we just want to thank you so much, uh, Mr. Schmack. Uh, <laughs> you're that guy. And uh, we appreciate it. Any, anything you got going that you want to talk about, tell the listeners. No. <laughs> this is one of the best episodes, I think. I just there wanna, you have it. Go I ahead. just to thank both of you guys because you know what, Cooper, when you when you uh, it, it was really exciting. Always exciting to talk to you and see you, and uh, I, I really enjoyed this. Thank you. This was great. There you have it, man. A few thank words. Oh, not, I, I'm not gonna say the GG. He don't like the gentle part, but the giant. <laughs> Mike, <laughs> thank you, big fella. I appreciate thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, guys. Okay. God bless you guys. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> 
Showtime with Coop is powered by FanDuel, the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNS Media Network.